What's up, Yes Water family? My name is Rico, and today I'll be showing you how to work the MP200 by Yes Water. Now, if you're looking for more welding content, you can check out my YouTube page out, The Well Lab. You can also check me out on TikTok, Instagram, and uh, Facebook. I've been using this machine for the last couple of days. I have a fab shop out here in Houston, Texas, and I'm always building custom projects, and I noticed that I've been using this machine more often than the rest of the machines that I do have. One of the first welding procedures we're gonna talk about is MIG. I'll show you how to get your basic settings on the menu, which is really, really easy. If you don't know nothing about welding the menu is real easy to work it also helps you out with the settings on getting started but uh yeah guys so i hope y'all are ready to learn something new today i will also be telling you a few of my tips and tricks in welding i've been welding for over 12 years so uh, i'm pretty experienced in my field so let's get this video started okay, okay guys so make is the first uh, procedure that we will talk about uh, in today's video the wire right now i'm using a uh, mig wire uh, you can use gasless wire or uh, this one, which requires gas 7525. You could pick up from your local uh, gas supplier. I always recommend to use MIG wire instead of gasless, simply because it welds better, it looks better. Especially if you're new to welding, this will be a lot easier for you to learn how to use. Uh, I picked this up for like 30 bucks. Uh, I think Yes Welder uh, also sells their own MIG wire, MIG wire that you can pick up. My recommendation to you is to get get the ER76. S and the, your, your wire, which can be the 0.030. Uh, this is the one that I recommend. This is gonna be really important on the size wire that you get, so don't forget. So, the first thing you wanna do is grab your mid gun and screw it in to the first port. So once you, once, once you have this screwed in, the next thing you wanna do is set up your gun. Uh, this is the tip right here, so the tip goes inside your gun, you screw that on there, it don't have to be too tight, it can be hand tight. Now uh, this is your nozzle, your nozzle will go in here also, but we're we going to wait for that. So once you got that in, now it is to, now it's time to set up the wire. Now. You have to be really, really careful with the wire because if this comes out, it's going to ex just shoot everywhere and your roll is not going to be any good. All right, guys, so I'm about to start putting my wire in there. Uh, what you want to do is, it comes with like a little hole right here. You want to align that with this because this is going to be spinning. So, let's see. Okay, I got that. Next thing you wanna do is, you have to be really careful with this. Grab your wire. If it's all bent up like this, just cut it off. Where it's bent up, take it off. And next is, you wanna stick your wire all the way through until it gets to this hole right here. See what, it, okay, as you can see, this is why I was saying I have to be careful because if not, everything's gonna come out. So make sure you don't do that because that can mess you up. All right, so you spin it back. Okay, let's try this again. So stick it in that little small hole right there, push it in. The wire's gonna come over here. Now you stick it into the next hole, which is gonna go into your gun. Once you got that, just keep pushing a little bit more. Once it's in there, you're gonna grab your latch, push it down, close it. That's it. Uh, I usually have my tension set at uh, about 3.5, so as long as it's not too tight, that's all, you, that's all you gotta worry about. So once you got that, of course, put your little cap back on. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So we're about to plug the machine up and go to the next step. All right, guys, so I have the machine set on my little cart. Um, you wanna have your argon hose right here and this one right here. You wanna make sure it's nice and tight because you, you don't want it to leak. This is the gas I was telling you about. This is 7525. I was looking for the sticker on here, but I could not find it. But 7525 to weld MIG wire. Uh, I got my gauge up here. I don't recommend this type of gauge. Uh, get you a flow meter and usually you'll have the pressure set about 30 PSI. Once you get everything nice and tight, make sure everything's good in the back. You might want to get you some soap and water and just 
slightly spray it, not too much, not on the machine, just on your fittings to make sure there's no bubbles coming out. Because the last thing you want to do is have a whole bunch of gas just leaking over your shop or your garage or wherever you're welding it. Once you see there's no bubbles, you're good to go. So now you press the button in the back and she is alive. Okay guys, so uh, of course we weld in MIG. The first thing you wanna do is click home. You know it has all your settings, everything. We're gonna go through that later on. So we're doing MIG. So once we got on MIG, press this button. It brings you to the MIG settings. Okay, uh, press it again. And it brings you to the top settings on top. 7525, that's the gas that we're using. And next is the type of wire. Uh, so we're using still, so leave it on still. It's gonna give you the options to uh, the, the size uh, wire you have. Earlier I told you I was, we were using 30, so we're gonna leave it at 30. Obviously, if you have thicker wire, you click on the wire that you did buy. Now, 2T, 2T, and 4T. Uh, 4T is basically just automatic. You can press the button, it will keep on welding. Uh, 2T is you press the trigger, it shoots the wire, you let go, it stops. Another thing over here, you will set the size uh, gauge that you're welding. So what's good about these machines is that it helps you out with the settings. So uh, right now we're gonna be using, I'm gonna say 3 8 So we're gonna leave it at 3 8 and it sets the amperage for you, the voltage, everything. So there's one good about these machines that if you don't know how to weld, it sets everything for you. So once everything's set up, it's pretty good. Uh, so this is what I was telling you about. So this is like a little design to help you uh, set your machine. Right here it says ground goes to the negative. Here's the negative polarity right here. So that's where our ground will go. Ground, everything's legit. And I'm gonna put the ground on my table for now. All right guys, so once you have all your settings on the actual water machine, you're basically uh, ready to weld. Now, uh, obviously, whatever material you weld in, uh, the thickness of the material is gonna be really, really important. So make sure that the thickness of material that you're welding matches the water machine settings because if not, it's gonna throw you off. Uh, that's what's good about these machines. They're smart, so they know uh, what, what voltage to set the what voltage the machine needs to be set on for the thickness of material that you are welding. Uh, I'm welding some pretty thick material right now, so I am running pretty high. I think the machine set at 17.8 volts right now. So I'm gonna be welding this T joint right here just to kind of show you the make function. Uh, whenever you do weld, make sure your metal is clean. It don't have to be shiny, shiny clean, but if you do have paint, a lot of rust on it, it's gonna affect uh, the welding. One thing about light welding MIG is really, really fast. I do a lot of work by myself. So for instance, if I'm welding in a hurry, gotta let, make sure everything's leveled. And let's just say I gotta make a tag. I don't even need a welding hood. I can just look away and it's tacked. And once I have a tack on there, it kind of just square it out, let's just pretend, trying to make it leveled. And once I like that, then you put the next tack. That's what I like about MIG, it's really, really easy, guys. If I was doing stick, you have to kind of strike it, make sure it's burning. You really don't need a welding hood. So once you have, once you have your tacks in, you're actually uh, ready to weld. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, lay down a, a downhill bead for y'all so y'all can kind of see how this uh, is supposed to look. So whenever you weld MIG, uh, this is what you want to look like. Uh, as you can see right here, this right here is just silicone. There's not really nothing. But make sure your, your plates are decently clean, but check all that weld. I'm gonna go ahead and do another bead so y'all can see what it looks like. I did a downhill bead, came out really good. Uh, this machine welds really, really good when it comes to MIG. Like I said, the settings are really, really good too. So uh, that's one thing I want you to know, guys. Make sure your settings matches what you're welding. That's what's, gonna, that's what's gonna help the machine burn and uh, do what it's supposed to do. Uh, that was a downhill bead. Uh, now I'm about to run a flat bead so I just, just so I can get the idea of what your weld is supposed to look like. 
Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do that, then we're gonna hop into some stick welding, kind of show the difference between the two and uh, keep on going with the plasma and all the rest of the settings on the machine. Let's go. Whenever you weld, guys, you always wanna make sure that you sturdy, make sure that you have something you can rest on, you, you're able to position yourself, you're able to see and have good vision. You can either push or you can either push out or you can come in, whatever works best for you. Some people can do one better than the other. Uh, but today I'm gonna just push out. All right guys, so I just kind of laid out a flat bead for y'all so y'all can see it. Came out pretty good, you can see, kind of see the waves and the diamonds. Whenever you make welding, you're just basically doing circles. Doing circles and you're pushing out. But uh, yeah guys, so uh, I'm about to go and hop into some stick welding. Uh, let's just see the difference in the two, how to set it in the machine, so. All right guys, for those of y'all who uh, don't want to do make, they want to do flux core, it's basically, uh, it's almost the same thing. I don't have flux core wire on me, so I won't be able to show you that. But once again, first button, which help you with the settings on top. Make sure whatever settings you have on here match what you have. Uh, the one thing that changes about flux core is if you watch over here, your ground does not goes to the positive polarity. This is gonna really help you out. That's the, this is the difference between MIG and flux core. Flux core, ground goes to positive. For MIG, if you, uh, we go back to the MIG setting, negative goes to your ground. So, pretty simple. Okay, now let's hop into some stick welding. So we're gonna click home. Let's do uh, MMA. So once again, set is on top. Press the first button. Uh, it's gonna say 60, 10, 70, 18. We're gonna use 70, 18 today. Then it's gonna see uh, the diameter of your rod. We're gonna use 332. Set that and Okay, once you see it, it changed it to 100 amps. Okay, so let's get ready to try those settings. Okay, whenever you're ready to set your ground and your positive, uh, you, once again, you look at your uh, little diagram right here. So negative goes to ground. So you're gonna go to the bottom, put that on your negative one, and positive goes to your stinger, which is, this is your stinger right here. So that's where you're gonna put the electrode at. And you go down to the bottom. Go to the bottom, positive, stinger, positive. So that's pretty much it. Stick one is more simple. You don't need no gas or anything else. These right here are gonna be your amps. Uh, you can turn it up and down. We will leave it 100 amps. That's what the settings recommend. Okay, guys, so I'm about to go ahead and run y'all a vertical pass. See, I can see the stick water. 100 amps, 332 rod, let's go. Okay guys, so uh, I just ran my first pass. Uh, looks really good, nice little slag in there. Temperature is perfect, 100 amps for 332. Machine is set perfect, A1. Whenever you weld with stick, it's gonna leave a little bit of slag on there. When, if, you weld, if you weld with flux core, it will also leave a similar slag. So you're gonna need you a chip and hammer, and all you do is knock that off. that out nice beautiful weld the temperature of 100 amps for 332 is really really good uh, that's what that's what you want it to look like especially when you do vertical spread the metal out evenly in both plates nice nice weld pretty simple right whenever I'm teaching other students how to weld I always tell them to get familiar with the machine uh, with your heats, your amperages, uh, because that will help you out a lot. Now, if you stick welding and you feel like the metal is not spreading out and it's just kind of balling up, it means you're too cold, you have to crank the machine up a little bit hotter. Or if you're welding and the metal seems to just be cherry red and it drops, or you make a big old hole, it means you're way too hot, you have to turn it down. Just make sure you get familiar with it. Turn it up and down of the 332 function is really, really accurate. 
uh, it's really, really close, so there should be more than enough from what you need. But I always, you know, tune it up depending on the material because if this was thinner material, uh, like 16 gauge, most likely it would bust through. You should not even be welding stick with a 16 gauge. That's the MIG function. Um, my recommendation to you, only use stick if the material is at least one eighth or Okay guys, so we did MIG, we did stick, uh, kind of show you the basic settings. Now let's get into some uh, TIG welding. So uh, this is my TIG torch. Whenever you do buy a machine, it does come in a package like this. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to set it up. Okay, the first thing you wanna do is grab your back cap. This is, I don't even see that, I'm camera not focusing, but this is the back cap which goes in the back behind this, uh, right here. Screw that on there. It don't have to be too, too tight, hand tight will do. Once it's on there, then you grab your cutlet. This is your cutlet right here. That goes inside with the big piece in the back. Then you grab your next piece, which is this. That slides in, you should be able to just screw it on there. Once that's screwed on there, grab the cup. This is your cup. And that should also be able to uh, just screw on there. And next thing you gotta do is just put your tungsten in there and you're ready to weld. Okay guys, once again, uh, you're ready to take, you click home. MIG, flux core, TIG. Okay, uh, you, TIG is pretty simple. Uh, you don't have that many settings because the only, only thing you're going to be doing is messing with your amperage right here. So, uh, once again, positive goes to your ground. The next thing you got to plug up your uh, TIG torch, which is going to be these settings right here. Negative is your TIG torch. So you go down to the bottom. Negative, you screw that in there. Once that's in there, you grab your red hose. That's where your argon will be trapped. Right, so for the uh, TIG function, it comes with this red wire. I hooked it up with a union, a coupling to my argon hose. This argon hose travels to my tank. Now, whenever you do TIG, guys, it needs to be 100% argon. Uh, you can't use 75, 25. Uh, same amount of pressure, you can leave it at 30. Uh, that's all you need. All right, guys, so I'm about to start doing some TIG. Uh, whenever you uh, get your TIG torch, you want your tungsten sticking out. Uh, I'm trying to get the camera to focus. I don't know if I can see that. About one eighth out of the cup. Uh, once you're ready to weld, obviously open your gas up. This is your nozzle right here. This is your valve right here. Open that up. You hear the gas coming out and you're ready to weld. So I'm gonna do a little bead right here. So you can see what TIG looks like. That. Okay, there it goes, right there. So that's what TIG will look like. This carbon steel, remember, your metal needs to look nice and shiny, no paint, no rust in order for TIG action to work. I do have the machine set at 100. The thing about TIG is that it don't have no fancy settings like it does for MIG. So uh, amperage is what you're gonna be playing with. Obviously, the more heat, uh, the more it digs, the less heat, the less it digs. So that's something that you're gonna have to uh, figure out for your own. So yeah, guys, so that's pretty much the TIG. I'm not gonna do too much of the welding. Uh, I have tons of videos on YouTube if you actually wanna know how to TIG weld. Uh, I just wanna demonstrate y'all on uh, what the machine could do. Uh, I think TIG, I give this machine uh, 10 out of 10, man. It does really good with TIG. It feels really, really good uh, compared to other brands. Uh, I think it does a great job. Uh, just remember, whenever you do TIG, it needs to be clean metal. This is not made for uh, rusty metal. 
Uh, TIG is good if you're doing a project, let's just say inside a house, and you got a carpet on the ground, uh, and you don't want no flames, you don't want that to catch on fire, so you're gonna switch over to TIG. Uh, you can't use MIG, cause you know, MIG drops a whole bunch of, uh, of, of uh, BBs, and that could catch on fire, or something can catch, the rug will catch on fire. That's the last thing you wanna do. So TIG is the way to go, that's the way you don't on the field to avoid sparks. But enough about that. Uh, let's get into the plasma cutting, which is another one of my favorite features about this uh, water machine. I'm gonna show you how to set everything up. It takes a little bit of skill to know how to use a plasma cutter, but it's not rocket science, it's pretty easy. I'm gonna be teaching you some of my tips on how to cut a uh, plate. Uh, I gotta, I'm gonna go get my piece of plate set up, we're gonna cut it, and I'm gonna show you how it works. Okay guys, now let's step into the plasma cutting setting. Once again, you're gonna click home. Uh, use your knob, you're gonna turn to plasma cutting. Press it. Okay, so once again, you have more settings on the top chart. Uh, uh, pretty much, everything is pretty much set. The only thing you have is your 2T or 4T. We're gonna leave it on 2T. So, the memory. Okay, so 40 amps, we're gonna leave it. We're gonna max it out. Whenever I do cut with the plasma, I just like to leave it at its max. Uh, this machine works with 110. If you want the full potential of this machine, stick with 220. So uh, on your little uh, graph, on your little diagram right here, it says the ground goes to this little picture. It got a picture of a clamp right here, which is gonna be, I don't know if I can see that right here. So that's where your ground will be at. Will be at. So we will to switch this over right next to the sign. So, yeah, so that's your basic settings in the front. Now let's go to the back, which is gonna be really, really important. So when, whenever you get the machine, it's gonna come with these accessories. It's gonna come with a tube. So you want, it will come with a tube and your filter. So to put the filter on there, you just unscrew this little red piece. Let me screw it for you. Bam, it comes out, your filter comes out. So what you wanna do is, your red holes, it's gonna go in this, and it's gonna come with these right here. Make sure these right here are nice and tight. You don't want no air leaking out because you're gonna lose pressure. Uh, it's gonna come with this too, your gauge. Your gauge goes in there. Make sure you put Teflon on everything, guys. You do not want this leaking air. Uh, you want this to be a nice cut. So uh, this right here is gonna be your fitting to your comp compressor. You do need a compressor uh, in order to work the uh, plasma cutting uh, feature. So uh, this is gonna be yours. This is will come. So this is what you'll have to buy. So once you're ready to set that up, also this blue tube will, will go to the back where it says cut gas. Pretty simple. Slide this in here. Put your little red piece back on there. Have your air hose connection and that's going to be hooked up to that and the air will travel through the filter come back around go in there pretty simple these are your connections to your uh torch this one goes in here screw that on there i usually just hand tighten it nice tight this one goes right next to it same thing all you gotta do is screw it on there Okay, okay guys, so let's get started with the basics of cutting with the plasma. So I got all my connections hooked up, machines ready to go. So basically what you do is when you're ready to cut, when you're ready to cut, you can press the trigger and uh, air is gonna start coming out. And you hit the plate one time and come up and it's gonna ignite the flame. And all you gotta do is drag it and cut it on where, obviously wherever you wanna cut at or whatever design you're trying to cut out. It's really simple, really easy. Uh, I love using the plasma cutter. I use it all the time. I'm always cutting metal and adding metal, so uh, this comes in real, uh, real handy. Before we cut, guys, make sure you have uh, proper uh, uh, goggles. Uh, I recommend for you to use goggles, but I have dark shades, which we're gonna use today, obviously, your gloves. Uh, you definitely gonna need them because the light is pretty bright. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a nice little cut. I'm gonna travel towards me for this cut. 
So, I'm um, getting ready, got my hand on the trigger. So, as soon as I'm ready, I'm gonna hit it one time. As you can see, nice clean cut. Does a great job when it comes to cutting. I really like this feature a lot. I use it all the time. Well, there you have it, guys. Hopefully, today's video helps you on getting started on cutting, welding with your MP200 by Yeswater. My audio did get cut off, so I had to do a voiceover, but I hope you enjoyed today's video as much as I enjoyed making it. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.